first impressions of the game. This game's amazing. This is way better than what I had expected. I'm surprised it's so polished. I am too. Like, I'm actually shocked at how good this game is. Black Myth Wukong. It's a game that's been in the news for the past couple days at this point. First as a sexist and racist game, then as a triumphant outcry to the anti-woke movement. It's actually kind of a really impressive transition from highly incentivized article creators or blog posters or just people who are writers in general to more YouTube content creators and just content creators in general. How Black Black Myth Wukong developer's history of sexism is complicating its journey to the West. What? But beneath the luster of this Souls-like studio is a studio plagued by claims of sexism. Several posts have surfaced on Chinese media site written by individuals from the studio that contain multiple references to genitalia and innuendo. This has provoked backlash about some people in the games community, many of whom are women. This is the most retarded article I've ever read in my life. The headlines of gaming have completely morphed into what was a published kind of print type headline to more of a YouTuber thumbnail type headline. And I absolutely love it. Now you might be asking yourself, Colton, why are you talking about this? This has nothing to do about what you normally talk about. And I would argue that it actually does have a lot to do with what I normally talk about. It's actually critically important to our culture in fitness, bodybuilding, all of this stuff. And to be honest, honest, I don't just want to confine myself in that little box alone because there's so much else in the world to talk about. Let me explain. Black Myth Wukong isn't just a game, it's a movement. In a world where gaming is increasingly criticized for its adherence to the DEI culture, diversity, equity, and inclusion, Black Myth has taken a very conventional stand in Chinese traditionalism and pushing against a lot of what is the woke culture. This game went from one of the most controversial publishes of the year to now the most sold and most concurrently played game of all time. Today is the day for victory laps, my friends. All of the mainstream media is getting blown out. All of mainstream entertainment is getting destroyed. The fans are speaking and rejecting everything the media has been lying about this entire time and just winning. Black Myth Wukong uh, has the biggest single player game launch ever on on Steam, uh, despite the SJWs trying to destroy it, despite IGN trying to destroy it, uh, now they're just reporting like it, like that never happened. <laughs> so let's dive into why that is a little bit more. Looking at the numbers, Black Myth has debuted a huge amount of success, quickly climbing to the highest ranks of the most concurrent players on Steam and most people buying the game at one time. It's actually crazy. It's reached 4 million copies sold over a span of literally a couple days. It has gathered a massive player base of huge supporters and the pre-orders alone surged during the controversies that were its pre-publishing era. This was simply because of many people saying their anti-woke stance was a breath of fresh air in the gaming community. That allegations against game science have surfaced over the years via reports of the developer fostering a sexist culture and work environment with numerous women in this the is why people gaming are community yeah. highlighting these problems within the studio as well as backlash following crude and controversial social media posts by Game Science mm -hmm. co-founder Ji Feng. As of this recording, Game Science has repeatedly refused to comment on the allegations. Although because the reason why they don't comment on the allegations is because there are only allegations and the company isn't accountable to GameSpot or IGN or Kotaku or Polygon. They're not accountable to any of these companies. But again, the, the conversation isn't just all about sales. It's the narrative that has been chosen to be embraced here, where games are really critically acclaimed to how well they adhere to the social norms or what is supposed to be political trends more rather than the norms. It stands apart entirely by drawing its conclusion to Chinese mythology and traditional storytelling. This somehow, as racist as this sounds, led the Western to call it anti-woke, to call it sexist, racist, all of these things, even anti-inclusionary. <laughs> One Steam user actually mentioned that they bought the digital deluxe version, something that's well over $100, precisely because of their stance on controversy. There was a specific article posted where it talked about racism, sexism, and specifically the exclusion of groups and minorities within the game, even though the game is primarily using animals to display its traditionalism, but that's neither here nor there. 
Uh, screen Rant Lord Blackmouth Wukong score after a female journalist criticized the game for not including female characters and for the monkey's supposed lack of diversity. Uh, she then attacked the developers over false accusations. Khan's game's performance is unpolished, lacking in inclusivity and diversity. While my analysis review of Blackmouth Wukong remained focused on gameplay, it's important to mention the controversies surrounding the game studio and the reports of misogyny and sexism from developers. Playing as a female gamer allowed me to notice issues surrounding inclusion and representation. Nothing about being a female allows you to play a video game in a different mindset. Uh, that's not even true. That's retarded. Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? I mean, playing like a moron does, and so you do get a unique perspective on this, but it's just not the one that she's talking about. Well, the author has actually taken down that post as well as deleted her entire social media presence, which I find absolutely hilarious. She literally rage quit journalism because of her shitty hit piece. Uh, what's this? Uh, the reporter who tried to make a hit piece about Wukong is not happy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I really would like to encourage folks to read my and ki Hoon's article from October, which is linked elsewhere in the thread. Not just skim or read summaries, but really read it. I think a lot of what's happened since we published it has gone on to prove the point of the article. It's not even that the whole studio is toxic. I have no idea. Ah! The literal title of the article she made. How Black Myth Wukong Developer's History of Sexism is Complicating Its Journey to the West. Everyone has really just gone on to prove over and over that Black Myth Wukong's online community is infested with sexism and its developers at best don't care. Anyway, sorry for the self-promotion. I've just left Twitter and have been thinking about this a lot lately and wanted to say it somewhere. I've now also seen proof these creator guidelines are real. And all I have to say about that is LOL. LML. Ah, we already covered this yesterday. This just goes to show how this journalist has no idea what she's talking about. And uh, if I shit worked and invalidate the years of quality work the, the, the devs did, multi-award winning senior reporter. Well, I'll tell you one thing you didn't win an award for was this. It was all for nothing. It was all for nothing. And you know what? Thank God. And at the end of the day, what it is, is gamers are enjoying and appreciating the focus on the core gameplay, the core storytelling, the core aspects of masculinity being represented within a game built for gamers, which are majoritively men. It's free from what they see in the Western society of the sort of forced inclusivity that many truly dislike. And not only is it just a fan amongst the players, but it's literally bursting. I mean, Black Myth Wukon is bursting through through any record set in sales in games ever before. And it's a clear sign that there is a significant demand for games that don't fall within line of the eye inclusionary criteria. And it's a more important sign to say that we're pushing back against this horrible agenda that's been forced on us for so long. Anti-masculinity, embracing equity, and all of these people enjoying everything that they want. Males competing in female sports, females competing in male sports, non-binary sports, like all of this stuff that has plagued the industry that we're a part of has really come to a point in which no one wants to tolerate it anymore. What is the question? What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who feel actively victimized by your presence here? Life's tough. Get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. Next question. And at the end of the day, Black Myth is not just a game, it's a cultural touchstone. It is a significant sign that there is still a demand to push away from this agenda that has been so heavily pushed in Western societies. And I will be very upfront, it's honestly why I moved out of America a long time ago, and I don't plan on moving back. It has sent a powerful message to not just the gaming industry, but any e-commerce business in the world has thought, wow, you don't need to be woke to succeed. You don't need to be inclusionary to succeed. And I think this is of critical importance because we're just seeing so many titles fail in the industries at large due to their wokeism. We're seeing Marvel Industries just have horrible movies come out that are based around female strong characters, which for a demographic that watches those movies who is almost entirely male doesn't really make sense. We're seeing casts that are more different colors than white people, which is fine if the actual place that the story is taking place is going to relate to that kind of cast. That is just a forced situation that isn't reality. It's kind of like, why is this happening? Weird, weird. And I don't think anyone enjoys it. Asian countries have thankfully not broken their traditionalism and culture. They're very culturally bound to the things that they believe in, hard work ethics, advancements in society, and the traditional way of living. And it shows because they pretty much beat America in every category, not even just the Olympics, but in intelligence, in economic, 
and industry booming capacity. People don't realize this, but China is far exceeding America in terms of its capability. And I can tell you exactly why that is, but you probably can already come to that conclusion yourself. They don't accept the purple haired maniacs who are depressed, popping antidepressants left and right. The US embraces and encourages that, but China doesn't simply deal with it. Now, again, I'm touching on this because you and I, my friend, are going to benefit from this because realistically, our wallets do the talking. We buy the stuff that is good and not the stuff that is inclusionary bullshit, not the disgusting aged poop on the ground that's been smeared in a hundred people's boots walking by, which is the entire Marvel franchise or Disney franchise or anything that produces movies in 2024, essentially. The money is funneling in the companies that simply don't mind the wokeism and pushing back against it. And it's very clear that they can barely handle the money coming in. They are making more money than any publisher or business who is woke, all of them combined. L literally, Black Myth Wukong's a great example. It's made more money than any game combined in 2024. All of the wokeism slop has literally gone down the drain, and it's finally showing the true telling signs. Vote with your wallet, right? Like, this stuff actually matters. And um, for that, I am in entirely grateful, and I just started to make this video kind of off topic, but I think it's of critical importance. Again, the more that you and I and everybody else watching this video can relate to the things that they enjoy, the better the world will truly become. And the more that we invest in things that aren't tainted with a certain agenda, again, the better the world becomes. So as fitness enthusiasts, as people who look to improve their physique or bodies or health or whatever you're here for, keep doing your thing. Keep being masculine if people call you that. Keep embracing the way of life that has been denoted by a lot of people in 2024. Because I promise you, there will be a time like back in the 80s when bodybuilding and fitness was the pinnacle of human existence. I don't know if you remember, but when Arnold opened his gym in New York, promo for the gym was he walked around New York shirtless and thousands of people surrounded him taking pictures. They got in cars and just started flexing their biceps everywhere while everyone started taking pictures. I mean, that used to be the world. It was exciting. It was invigorating. People appreciated masculinity. At least I think it's safe to say we're slowly converging onto a point in which that is the ideal again, which is an exciting future.